Let's say it's for, for some people that uh, don't know what happened with the exit with ESPN. We've heard Gosh. so many different stories. Obviously, we watch it. We know it. But what happened with the exit with ESPN? A lot. So how do I summarize it quickly? Um, listen, it had been years of kind of build up, I think, where everyone was saying, yeah, go ahead, do you. Everybody be yourself and say what you want. And, you know, all of the things political that were used to be kind of untouchable don't go there, especially in a sports network, which is what I prefer. Like, I'm a sportscaster. You know, my, my politics, my opinions actually don't matter as a journalist. And then all of a sudden, um, pandemic happened and George Floyd happened. And then the genie was out of the bottle and you couldn't put it back in where everybody was saying whatever they, they wanted. I was asked on a podcast on a day off. Uh, you know, Jay Cutler's podcast. It's not like I was on ESPN platforms and asked mm. about a couple of things that meant something to me in my life, which happened to be um, my racial makeup. Um, my mom's white, Irish Italian. Like, get out of the way when Mona Steele walks in the room. <laughs> Irish Italian, like big time. And then my dad's black. And so I, uh, years ago, you guys like to talk about The View. Years ago on oh, The View. Rich, um, very emotional. Yeah. yeah. Good morning. Yes. Sakata, yes. But go ahead. You were saying. They, they like to base things on facts. Yeah. Classy. Yeah. yeah. Right. Big John Sakata um, fans. <laughs> big. <laughs> big time. So long story short, Barbara Walters asked me um, 10 years ago, it is now, about why I didn't choose to identify as black like the current president at that time. And I was like, well, I, I, I am more than that or I'm half black, half white. And I'm so proud of my entire family. I think that that defines diversity in America, right? I mean, most of us are mixed with something now, but why would I exclude my mom? And my joke that I, that wasn't meant to be funny, but like, it's kind of, I'm pretty sure my white mom was there the day I was born. <laughs> like, I, I'm pretty sure she was there. I've done bit, that yes, childbirth yeah. thing and I know I was there. I still feel it 20 <laughs> years later. So to, I got, you know, in trouble canceled for saying, no, I'm biracial. And then she said, well, we'll look at the president. I was like, well, good for him. He was raised by a white mother and right, white grandmother, and his black father was nowhere to be found. So he's, the fact that he's not identifying with any part of that white side, to me, I don't love. But he has a right to do whatever. These days, my daughter's high school, you can say you're a cat today, and that's acceptable. So do what you want. I am choosing to identify with all of me and not pick a side. And then that turned into Sage Steele thinks Barack Obama is a sellout and shouldn't identify as black. And so people could take that how they wanted. But then with that... Uh, in combination with my comments on the vaccine, um, at mm -hmm. that point, J September, October 2021, um, ESPN Disney, w it was mandated that we it, took it, a vaccine. I felt like they were kind of piling on with that comment mm -hmm. because you look back at, at, at people that are multiracial. Tiger Woods refused to be put in a box. And yeah. He invented a word, Calabasian. Remember mm -hmm. that word he created? Think of me of Calabasian. My mom's Thai. My dad's his. He said, don't put me in a box. And his mom even called him, I think, called him the universal child. And so why is it that suddenly you don't take a stand, but there have been all these precedents? But it's because I think we live in a device world and they want you to take one stand or another, sometimes for their position. Not no, yours. If I had said, no offense, mom, I am black. I'd be fine. If I yep. had said, all you anti-vaxxers out there go to hell, I would have been fine. But because I said, I don't believe I should be forced to put something into my body that has not had nearly enough research, it doesn't take much more than a Google search to know that the FDA takes an average of six to nine years to approve a vaccine. This became political too quickly. I didn't like what I was seeing. I just wanted to wait. But in order to keep my job at ESPN Disney, I mm -hmm. had to get it. And I was devastated over that. So when I said a global company like Disney, I think it's sick and scary to man mandate it. That mm -hmm. plus the race comments about how I choose to identify, that was that was the beginning of the end. So, I, you know, it's funny, Tom, when you say Tiger Woods says he's a uh, Cabal Cabal Asian. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he so he's in other words, he's Armenian because the <laughs> I-A-N at the <laughs> end. Easy. I didn't know Tiger Woods yeah. Armenian. He's an very impressive. He's <laughs> yeah. an Armenian. But that's a great combination. But go, going back to this. So. <clears throat> So you you took the vaccine and then you're sitting there talking about the fact I that had literally just come from getting the shot like 30 minutes prior. Yeah. I was hot. Oh, wow. Oh, you got to be kidding me. So he got you 30 minutes after you got it. I it, it just was a coincidence. I was planned. To, pl I had planned on going on a show and I knew his publicist and Jay had just started the show. And so he was, you know, would you come on? He needs a woman. I'm like, sure. I've covered him. You know, why not? And that was the last possible day to get the shot in order to be, quote, fully vexed by September 30th, 2021. So I waited till the last second. And I was this close to not doing it and potentially getting fired because I felt so strongly about mm. just not feeling comfortable mm. with what it was. And so I, re I had gone to the stupid grocery store pharmacy to get this shot in order to keep my job. And I was very emotional because I felt like a sellout. Mm. I felt like I was letting myself down and my kids down when I tell them to stand up for what they believe in. But I am a single mom. 
Um, and I have three college age. Next year, I got all three in college at once. What? I need my job. I love my job. And I, I loved it till the last day, you guys. So I had no choice in that way if I needed if I needed to support the three kids. And again, I've been 100 percent the wage earner my entire marriage and since. So you don't just walk away. And that's why I, I, I understand people's fears right. for standing up. Yeah. But at that moment, I had just come from there. And then, yes, yeah, so I had the Band-Aid on my shoulder, not even knowing, I, not even remembering. And I, I was running hot. And I actually held back a lot mm. um, for what I really wanted to say. But no matter what, I'll stand by it today. And it obviously was quite costly. But <clears throat> to, to force someone, you know, my body, my choice is only when it's convenient, apparently. And that's uh, where I was like, I'm done. If they had had then stopped there like okay suspend me take me off the air for 10 15 days whatever it was publicly apologize issue a statement then i didn't know they were going to crush me with another statement and then take assignments away from me um that's when i thought wait a minute it's one thing to be punished it's another thing to continue most importantly while my peers are doing what going on espn platforms talking about um how devastated they were that roe versus wade got overturned on an nba show <laughs> having a moment of silence on women's college hoops during the NCAA tournament um, to mourn what was happening in Florida, the don't say gay bill, where those words aren't even in the Stupid. bill. So if we're allowing that and encouraging that by producers and management to have them talk about those issues on sports programming live, but I can't talk about my own opinions on a podcast that has nothing to do with ESPN, that's where I say, which one is it? It isn't just some who get to speak. It's <clears throat> diversity of thought, and you can't pick and choose based on the narrative of your company. And so that was what the lawsuit was about. By the way, freedom of speech, not under constitution for government. The state of Connecticut has a particular um, statute that protects employees. You are allowed to speak up and criticize your employer even if you are complying with the rules. I got the damn shot. I was complying, and I can still have an opinion. So that's where the lawsuit came from, and that's why we ended up, you know. What I, what I was going to ask you on this exact topic right here, because you brought up, obviously, the backstage situation. Prior to that, you brought up 2020, uh, the bubble in e uh, e ESPN, obviously owned by Disney. Ron DeSantis, where woke goes to die. Welcome to Florida. Diversity of thought. We see the DEI agenda. You can be DEI anything, but a diversity of thought that's against the narrative or against the message is a fireable offense, apparently. So during the bubble, you were talking, you were covering that. The ESPN, NBA bubble in Orlando. NBA bubble, exactly. Yeah. Um, social justice movement. Everyone's wearing the thing. Everyone has their message. Black Lives Matter. George Floyd. You're at the middle of this as a apparently black reporter, half white, half black. How much of that weighed into all this? Because there was one player that I recall, Jonathan, uh, Isaac. Jonathan Isaac, who said, look, I'm just, you know, I love God. I love, I'm not going to, I'm not going to play into this narrative. I just want to play ball. So you were, I assume, covering NBA at this point, the bubble, sports NBA center, bubble, yeah. sports center. I remember that. How much of that is just, you, you, you hit it, you hit it on the head, which is diversity of opinion, not diversity for the sake of diversity. How much factored into that? I, I, all of it, I think. Mm -hmm. And you listen with what happened with Jonathan Isaac, and I've gotten to know him quite well since. Yeah. And what a lovely young man who's displayed such courage that day. And you remember how he got crushed for being a black man who said, I want to stand. Yeah. My country means something to me, et cetera. Um, and then what happened the next day? He went up for a rebound, yeah, came down, blew knee. out his knee. Yeah. And the Twitterverse oh, went nuts oh, yeah. celebrating his injury. And he's, what, 22 years old. Yeah. You should have kneeled, bro, that, that right? whole thing. Just because they disagreed with his yeah. stance. So it only goes one way. Um, all of it played into it. I will say I even posted the black square right after that. Yeah. I didn't believe in it. But I posted it because I felt that pressure, right? I think so many, I know m mm. many, many people who did the same thing. And to me, it's like, no, I, I don't care if you're green or blue or if you're a guy or a girl today, tomorrow, cat, dot, I, I don't care. But if we're going to preach about diversity, it can't just go one way. And it has to begin with diversity of thought. And I'm just, it oh, took years, uh, but now I'm done, obviously. Yeah. Now, did it, did it, you speak with Bob Iger during that time? or No, I haven't spoken with him in years. Have you have you ever had an inter interaction with him? Yeah. How is he? He was always great. 
He was That's always great years ago, and I think he's brilliant um, in so many ways, obviously quite successful, and he's done a pretty good job, I think, the last several years, um, have not been great, and there have been specific decisions that, I mean, he's the CEO, that he has made that all, that all of the employees must comply with, even if you don't agree. And I know many managers who didn't agree with a lot of the things that we were told to do. Um, but when you choose, listen, you, you got, you're the ultimate businessman, and when you pick a side in business, like to me, it's to, Michael Jordan said it. Republicans buy sneakers, too. Don't you want everyone watching your programming? Why are we dividing? Why are we choosing to only report certain things? And that's where, I mean, I, I struggled for years, and then it builds, builds, builds to a certain point, and then you can't be quiet, especially when you, you know, like as a parent, this was bigger than just me. I have these three kids who are older. They're not like six, eight years old. That's different when they're babies. You can shield them, but they're watching me preach to them to stand up, and then I go silent. So... You, I don't know what everyone's line is. It's yeah. a very personal decision, especially when finances are involved in jobs and cancellation, right? I, I, I am the poster child for why people should stay quiet. Would Bob